it's crazy because I feel like during this whole quarantine, I've heard more LeBron talk than I did before. Then, yeah, before everything was shut down. Like it's like everything that goes on in the world somehow comes back to LeBron James, which I don't understand. But because uh, he's King James, what you mean you don't understand it? Yeah, well, it's kind of it's a little bit it's a little bit crazy. Everybody got the King <laughs> name in their mouth. One of which being uh, one of the guys. He's probably number two as far as players that I didn't like um, growing up watching basketball, and that's uh, Paul Pierce, who might be LeBron's arch nemesis. He puts out his uh, his top five list, and uh, he leaves LeBron James off of his top five list. Mm-hmm. Um, now we know, you know, that it's a little bit it's a little bit petty when it comes to Paul Pierce. He has a little extra grudge with LeBron James. They've always had a uh, heated back and forth type of relationship. Um, but after he put out his list, uh, Kendrick Perkins, who was a teammate of uh, Paul Pierce for a couple of years in Celtics, was on that championship team uh, with uh, Garnett, Ray Allen, and uh, Rondo, and, uh, and, and, and Paul Pierce. And uh, he told us a story, well, he didn't tell us, but he, you know, he told a story of LeBron's rookie year. Uh, they were playing a preseason game in Ohio, and uh, it was getting heated. They were going back and forth. But uh, so, you know, towards the end of the game, Paul Pierce actually spits at uh, LeBron James in the, the Cavaliers bench, which is over the top crazy to me. Like, there's no, 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 no way, shape, or form that you should be spitting at anybody. Like, that's the utmost disrespect. Um, you know, I always knew Paul Pierce was a hater, you know, prior to, you know, um, you know, him putting, leaving him off his top five list. But just hearing the fact that he actually spit at the Cavs bench, and then you know when he's talking about it, he's not even you know apologetic about the situation. He's kind of like, yeah, it happened. It is what it is, type of thing, which which I thought was even crazier. Right. Yeah. No, I. I sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm good. No, hearing that story, it's just I don't know. I, I'm all about character and just the fact that he spits at like that's just so disrespectful. So I don't know how that wasn't even a bigger story when it happened. Um, but it's just, that's just insane. It's like massively disrespectful on Pierce's part. And that whole Celtics error, I, I think I've said it before on air where I feel like that Boston Celtics team that 2008 through 2012, right. That was kind of their run right there because when, once LeBron went to Miami, their run was over. So from like 2008 to 2012, 2013, that Celtics team, they carried themselves with a certain aura as if they were like this legendary NBA team. You know, yeah. they won one championship. And I thought it was, I thought it was just really, it, it was clownish of, of Paul Pierce to be like, oh, LeBron isn't a top five player. Like anyone who's watched enough basketball will tell you LeBron James is mentioned amongst the greatest to ever play the game. Um, whether you want to call it the Mount Rushmore, the top five, the GOAT list, whatever you want to call it, if you're not mentioning LeBron James within that top four to five players that ever played a game, you you have not been watching basketball. Simple as that. Um, but then, you know, the, the pettiness, Paul Pierce has always had this chip on his shoulder when it comes to LeBron James, and I don't know if he feels like he never got his proper due because of LeBron being in the league, but he's always had this little back and forth for LeBron, and he just, he to me, he comes out of it looking like a fool. You know, you don't put him on your top five list. Then we find out that you spit in the direction of the man during his rookie season. I I, I don't really understand that on Paul's part. And um, I'm glad Kendrick told that story because, you know, Kendrick could have easily held on to that, especially knowing that he was a teammate of Paul Pierce. But he wanted to be honest about why he felt Paul Pierce would have left him off the list. And even in that clip that you mentioned, Trip, they show where, where I mean, where Perkins talks about this longstanding beef between them. This season, when the, when the games were still being played, there's a clip of LeBron walking up to Kendrick Perkins, giving him a hug, shaking his hand, and then completely walking right past Paul Pierce. He didn't even want to acknowledge Paul Pierce. And we're talking about 17 years later, he still won't speak to him or at least give him the recognition that, hey, we're in the same room. There's nothing to talk about. Yeah. And, cause, and I mean, that's real corny of Paul Pierce. Like, yo, it's like, because we know as men, there's a couple of things that, you know, that level of disrespect like somebody gonna really put hands on you behind one of them things is you inviting another man in your private you know the other other one of them is is spitting 
you know, on somebody or, or at somebody. Like, you got you to be prepared to throw hands. And, you know, Perk even said, you know, a scuffle ensued after that in the locker room. Like, it got real ugly, you know. And for me, it's just magnified because I already kind of looked at, you know, Paul Pierce kind of as an asshole after that whole thing in the garden, you know, beating the Knicks in a regular season game. And you start bowing and running laps around the garden. I'm like, bro, like Jordan didn't even do that. And he and he demoralized the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? And he wasn't on it like that. So for you to be doing something like that, and you're not even of that that caliber, so I just thought it was the utmost disrespect. And that's with me, you know, I always got something something negative to say about the Knicks. But in that moment, it was like, hold on now, nah, you're not about to disrespect the New York. You know what I'm saying? Like it's still we might joke amongst each other, you know what I'm saying? Be like, you know, with your with your siblings or something like that. We might get at each other, but ain't nobody coming from the outside world and going to disrespect this, and we just going to sit back and be like, it's cool. So from that moment, I had stopped rocking with Paul with Paul Pierce. You know, he's all he's been saying outlandish stuff in the media mm-hmm. for like the past two years. Though he had, you know, he's better than Wade. Now Braun isn't in his in in the top five, and it was the dumbest reason for LeBron not even being in the top five at that. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. I think that this situation is just one of the additional nonsense activities or things that, you know, he has said. And it's just going to speak to his legacy and it's going to hurt what we know of him. So, so you know, I, we always talk about character and a lot of these players, what they do doesn't just end on the court. It's outside. That's why people salute, you know, saluted Kobe so much and LeBron James because their legacies transcend past the court. So this is just going to affect him in a negative way. So he's just really making himself look really silly. Yeah, at least if he was apologetic about it, I might have been like, all right, you know what? It was it was in the heat of the moment. It shouldn't have happened. He understands that. But he really was just coming off like, I don't care. Yeah, I did it. So what? I don't rock with him. I don't care. Like Yeah, you know, that's that what was- I mean. They a lot of those guys, um, and I don't get it. Again, they carry themselves like that's the same group of guys that Boston team that got upset with Ray Allen for going to Miami at the end of their run, and they held this grudge against Ray Allen. And like I said, they carry themselves with like this, this royalty type. You know, like oh, we're so much better than everything else that was going on. Like they tried to knock LeBron for the Miami thing, and I've heard Kevin Garnett go on and on about, oh, LeBron had to go over there because he couldn't beat us, like. Bro, I'll be the first to say I'm not a fan of LeBron going to Miami, but you cannot say to me that he had to go over there to beat you when y'all loaded up to beat him. You know what I'm saying? Kevin Garnett had never been to a finals before Boston. Paul Pierce never been to a finals. Rondo had never been to a finals. LeBron had already been to a finals when those guys got together. LeBron was, was just scratching the surface of what we're seeing now. So you guys joining up, you guys had to do that in order to beat him because Paul, Paul Pierce on his own couldn't do it. Ray Allen in Seattle couldn't get to a finals. Kevin Garnett had only gotten out of the first round one time in Minnesota. So you guys had to come together for the greater good of, oh, if we want to win a championship, this might be our best shot. And that's what happened. But they go on and on about LeBron and they go on and on about everything else they don't like in the league. But I never hear them openly admit, like, we weren't as great as we thought. We won one championship. That was it. We won one. And then the next time we faced Kobe, Kobe got us up out of there. So you know, you got to give Braun his respect, too. Um, and, and as you mentioned, Tripp, uh, Pierce's comments about Wade is, is ridiculous. We know Wade was a better player than Paul Pierce was. It's, right. We don't even got to debate it. Um, I remember last year in the playoffs, uh, you know, Kyrie had a really good game, one against Milwaukee, and he was already anointing, oh, Boston's going to beat Milwaukee. And then Antetokounmpo got them right up out of there, too. So he continues to say outlandish things that just make him look stupider and stupider every time he tries to sound knowledgeable about what's going on now that he's not playing the game. Right. And you know what? That's just that's such a classic, like, old varsity, you know, dude in the neighborhood talking about back in the day, like, bring that energy when it was the time. Don't talk about wish it could have, would have, or talk about people in that way. And even, you know, the, the fact that people criticize LeBron so much for that trade, I wanted to circle back on that. We all know in this league, like, you do what you need to do to get a ring. And I never understood that backlash. I know we have people like, you know, um, like Kobe, who stayed on the same team forever and got consistent rings. And that's amazing, you know, to have that rapport. But I still think it shouldn't matter any less that you were able to use your brain and create a team that was powerful enough to win. I, I don't think that should be found upon. I think it was smart basketball. It's strategic. 
I guess uh, and it's good coaching. You know what I mean? What? I said, I guess he figured since the guys came to him, he didn't do it. They did it. They they right. joined him. He stayed, he stayed in, in Wolf. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I mean, he, 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 he was ring chasing towards the end. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, no matter how you want to argue it, you could make the case either way, you know, whether you like his decision to go to Miami or if you felt he should have stayed in Cleveland or if you felt they should have joined up in another team. However you want to make the argument, you can make the argument. But bottom line, um, me as somebody who loves the game and has watched the game for so long, the year that the Celtics won the championship in 08, LeBron took them to seven games by himself. When they had three all-stars, three future Hall of Famers, and Rondo was still very young and Perkins, LeBron James was dropping 35 and 40 points consistently on them guys and got them and, and dragged the Cleveland team to game seven against the eventual champions. So that that's what I, I like the least about all these comments. Like they talk about LeBron as if they were just smacking LeBron upside the head and then he had to go to Miami. LeBron was competing. He just didn't have the pieces with him to be able to get over that hump. But when he went to Miami that first year, they beat Boston in five games. That second year, they went seven games. And to me, I always credit it as one of LeBron's best performances because they were down 3-2 going back to Boston and LeBron dropped 45 points in a game that Miami had to win to save their season. So you cannot, I don't care what your personal beef were. I don't care if you felt, oh, this guy might have been overrated. You got to tip your hat to the guy and say, look, we had some great battles in the playoffs. And the same way we gave it to him, he gave it to us. We got to him early on because we had the pieces. But when he had the pieces, he got to us. And that's how it happens. And as Tripp mentioned, when Pearson and Garnett, they were old, they went to Brooklyn. They thought they were going to be able to hang with Miami then. And they couldn't hang with Miami. And he kind of, they kind of did the same thing. They wanted to chase a ring and hope to steal a ring late in their career. And it didn't work. But you got to give your credit to LeBron James. He is, without a doubt, one of the top five players of all time. You might have him higher than other people, but he's in that conversation. Okay. Now, speaking of other trades. What's um, good? It's your boy Daylight. You're now tuned in with RealFansRealTalk.com. Bye, y'all. Live from the camp. Come on, live. Uh-huh. This is Hi, Real Fans Real Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real 